Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method that reveals smart money buy and sell levels. Borsog Trading, which helps to get you in sync with the markets. And the CTKS Masterclass, where I seek to transfer my 30 plus years of experience in financial markets to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love. Gaining positive excellence in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market as well as the stock market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the tax software I use and the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please seek out a CTKS ambassador to get 80% off and you can also apply for a partial masterclass scholarship. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin is currently down 0.56% to 19392. Ethereum is up 1.87% to 1356. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, Clayton up nearly 14.5%. <laughs> Over now. Matic up 6.41%. Chili's 5.3% up. Elron EGLD up 3.45%. Carver 4.2%. And LDO just a little under 2% up. The greatest losers in the top 100 in the past 24 hours. Axie Infinity down nearly 6.2%. Chain or XEN down 5.3%. TWT Trust Wallet down 4.73%. Arweave down 4.2%, NEO about 4.2% as well, and Terra Classic USD down 5.23%. You may be tempted to do your buying and selling decisions based on the color of the market. But crypto technical analysts do something incredibly different. First of all, they mark up their charts with the CTKS method. The CTKS method reveals high areas of support where you can step in and buy with a degree of safety. It doesn't mean you're going to pin the exact bottom. Price could go below that, but price is generally caught at very significant levels of support. And where does price reverse from? Areas of resistance. Total crypto market cap is currently 889 billion. We can see over the last session, which was just here, markets rallied, the crypto market rallied, and then couldn't get through this resistance. It came back into this cradle of up shooting support and downward support once resistance. It's actually confirmed that, so this is a good thing, but it's still tentative times for the entire crypto market to resume back up. There's some key data that I will show you later that could suggest we could break down from this level. So we need to keep our minds and eyes open. The reason that we look at Bitcoin is because of Rule 45. Your beloved alts cannot escape Bitcoin's gravity. Knowing what Bitcoin is doing is incredibly important. And you can see Bitcoin made a higher high than previously. This is really good. This is positive. But what we see, this Stanfield level at 19,641 is being rejected by Bitcoin currently. And Bitcoin's current price is 19,339. We've got to bear in mind that the Armageddon line is still quite close. That's at 18,942. And we can see that we're under two structural levels of resistance. One at that 19,641 mark and also at 19,423. We have support below at 18,662 and 18,573. But the key is there's something cooking inside the crypto market that perhaps a lot of people are not aware of. There could potentially be some negative price momentum and I'll explain why that's the case just in a little while. So what we do instead of just thinking on a green day that everything is going up or on a red day that everything is going down, we assess the market scientifically. It's really important to pop your Borsog code in each day and I explain this in depth in episode 685. On a daily basis we can see we've overcome this level of resistance 
with Bitcoin and we've actually been supported as well. We've got a rejection of lower prices. Literally Bitcoin came down and touched this once resistance line and confirmed it as support. So on the daily basis, it doesn't look too bad for Bitcoin, but we must be aware of past patterns that have actually played out. We had a big surge up like we had on the 17th of October. What happened next? We had a little bit more positive price momentum. We didn't see that this time. And this was on the other side of a weekend. Just bear that in mind. It looks very, very similar to what we're seeing now. What happened is that Bitcoin sold down. So we could see some negative price momentum if this pattern continues. Now, why would I think that pattern would continue? It has to do with the options expirations. On this Friday, we have options expirations of $1.28 billion and the max pain is 19,000. Just bear in mind, if the, basically, if the options writers, which are all the people with very deep pockets, the institutions, don't want to pay $1.28 billion, they will seek to drive price down to the max pain level. It doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it certainly means it's something that we need to be aware of. If the institutions have their way, we will see price come down, but that's not necessarily what could happen. For example, what if price goes up and seeks to challenge this line? It doesn't mean the price will come straight down to here. We could see a lot of variability across the next couple of days. Just bear this in mind. Please let me know, what do you think? Do you think we're going to see more upward price momentum and then a bit of a fall down in price? Or we'll just come down in price or we'll break through this resistance. This is why we have the Borsog code. So you can think three dimensionally at all times. When we look on a weekly basis, we can see that we've actually been rejected from this upward resistance level and we're under resistance from multiple perspectives right at the moment. So this looking at a weekly basis makes a better case for a sell off to 19,000, that max pain level. But remember, sell offs don't actually just stop at a specified particular price. They can go really way, way down. So just keep this in mind. This is important for your three dimensional thinking. Late into the weekend, we saw a short squeeze happen as the longs just piled in and they've kept on piling. Look at all these longs. They're piled all over the place. But what is price doing? Price is actually going down. The shorts are saying, uh, uh, no way longs. We're going to actually keep on driving the price down and they're doing a fairly good job of it. Across the past 24 hours, there's been 87.16 million in total liquidations across 26,263 positions. And when we look at the past 24 hours total liquidations, we can see 63% short. What about the past 12 hours? About 51% long. Past 4 hours, it's all over the place. 82% short. And the past hour, 63% short. So when we look on a relative basis, we could see the shorts were very heavy hit yesterday, but the longs more so today. And this is what you'll always find. The longs and shorts are always liquidating each other. What else do we potentially need to be careful about? If we look at the S&P 500 and note the Stanfield levels, we're coming up to a level of strong resistance. Typically, price will play between these strong resistance and support areas. It will literally get magnetized and reject. For example, we were above here, we rejected before. We pushed through here, which showed enormous weakness. And it showed technically that we were heading towards this lower level and we overshot that level. That's why I'm saying it doesn't necessarily stop it, but it does slow it. And when we saw an increase in price, we knew we were heading up to these levels because there's a magnetization inside the market that these da daily Stanfield levels, these institutional buy and sell levels will help you to find. 
And we've seen that we've done such a fantastic job of moving up. If we get a rejection at this, this 3826 mark for the S&P 500, we would expect to come down to the 3709 mark. That's where we've got strong structural support. And don't forget, Stanfield levels aren't drawn from recent price action. They're drawn from all of price action. Within the next week or so, I'll be actually doing an LV video on the updated CTKS method version 2. It's going to be a ripper. With the NASDAQ, we see it a bit more clearly. There's a range of smart money sell levels and they're actually coinciding with downwards resistance as well. Something to be aware of. One thing that's a little concerning, we've not really seen a spike in fear, which would actually yield a capitulation event. So capitulation pretty much has not occurred. I'll just zoom in to the VIX here for you. We've had a really unusual time with the fear gauge, with the VIX. It's just marched steadily, steadily up, almost like a stock. It's absolutely and utterly bizarre. What we typically get with the VIX are these spiky natures where things just explode into fear and then explode in back into euphoria. And of course, when things explode into fear, we get capitulations. And when they explode back into euphoria, prices increase. So we've seen a gradual ramping in fear, but we don't see things like this often. It's a really very, very strange time in the market. Getting a spike up of fear is not a bad thing at all. This actually tends to signify pretty good opportunities to get into the market and buy. Not always, of course, but generally the higher, the absolute better. And if you're an investor, one way to become incredibly professional is to wait till the VIX spikes up abnormally. And abnormally depends on the relative performance of the VIX. When you get into positions like this, they can be incredibly good dollar cost averaging strategies to get into something. It doesn't always work, but it is a very effective way, much, much better than saying I'm going to buy on Monday no matter what the price is. On Monday, the price could be spiking. When we look at the NASDAQ 100, of course, as fear has come down, the prices have gone up, but price is always moving in a wave because fear and euphoria move in waves as well. And we can see bond prices continue to utterly plummet as bond yields come up. This is incredibly unhealthy. This decay in bond prices is something that needs to be rectified. The markets are so out of whack. And we can see gold continues its downward plunge and the dollar continues to move up. We may be getting a sign that the dollar could be reversing down. If it reverses down, absolutely fear will drop down. Prices will rally. This is a good thing. Bond prices will start to actually come up. The yields will start to go down and the and gold will start to go up. So you have to always have your Borsog code handy. Think in terms of three dimensions. Never think in terms of one. This is why doing your Borsog code is so important. You will have a dominant percentage will, which will make its way up to the first part of the code. The code is in three parts. One is where you think the market is going. Two is the middle part is how you think your portfolio will deal with that when the market goes that direction. And the third part is how synchronized you feel with the market. If you don't feel synchronized at all with the market, if you've lost your Midas touch, if you're out of the zone, that's completely fine because the markets always try to desynchronize you. I literally spend all of episode 685 going through the Borsog code. Please check that out. And always remember, you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the return. And Masterclass students, please note that I shared my live chart in LV24 of this particular, these particular statistics. And when you look at these daily Stanfield levels on the DXY, you can see just how the market obeys these areas of structure. It's quite uncanny. 
And just remember, it's nine days to the next FOMC meeting, and the probability of a 75 basis point increase is 95.5%. And when we look at the nine sell-offs and recoveries in the S&P 500 since 1966, another reason we need to be careful if we don't get above this current price in the S&P 500 and start to get through this previous resistance, we could be in for some degree of pain. So we don't want to take out the previous lows. We want to take out this resistance and rally up. Just keep your eye open for that one as well. There's one massive difference between investors and traders. Investors look at the fundamentals and say, okay, I'm in this for the long run. It doesn't really matter where I buy or where I sell because I'm going to ride this thing for perhaps years. But as traders know, following the market sentiment and the ups and downs in the market can create enormous profitable opportunities. And all investors become traders anytime they buy or sell. If you're an investor who doesn't know how to trade, you're leaving money on the table. One way we can trade more effectively is to understand Bitcoin's gravity. And we know from Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. We can see Ethereum just literally moving in alignment with Bitcoin's gravity at the moment, just a little bit stronger. BNB, stronger than Bitcoin's gravity right now. And we can see ADA, poor old ADA, has not done well. It's still below Bitcoin's gravity, but we usually have slingshot events whereby a particular alt can slingshot back into gravitational alignment with Bitcoin. That's why really, really oversold projects that are significantly squashed under Bitcoin can actually snap back, but it also can apply the other way. So we've got to be a little bit careful. And XRP has rallied very, very well. It's above Bitcoin's gravitational pull at the current time. Solana is just under, a little bit under Bitcoin's gravity. Doge is showing a degree of strength. DOT is under, it's weaker. And look at Matic, just a superstar. But one thing professionals do not do, we don't FOMO. We have courage and we have knowledge and you'll need both to be profitable. Sometimes a trade will not go your way. And Edwin had a comment in the last video that I saw, thought was so good. I wanted to actually share it like this with you. The human mind is designed for survival. And sometimes when things don't go your way, blame is the fastest and easiest defense mechanism. Blaming avoids responsibilities and accountabilities. But blame has a problem. It doesn't have integrity. Manipulative and dishonest behaviors can come from blame. And it can be the path to negative excellence. It's really important when you actually get into a position where you want to blame, don't do it. What Edwin says, the price of playing the blame game is too costly. It stops you from learning by defying all knowledge, even when that knowledge is presented right in front of you. It ruins relationships between you and your closest ones. What's worse is it detaches you from reality. Zone two is the blame zone. And getting out of zone two requires courage. Your courage to admit your mistakes and forgive yourself. And your courage to self-reflect. Your courage to take up the challenge. And your courage to start taking responsibilities and accountabilities. With this process, getting out from zone two will happen faster than you think. Thank you, Edwin. And what Edwin was talking about, if you're just new to the channel, and if you're new to the channel, a very warm welcome. There are four stages that all investors and traders progress through to become consistently profitable and gain real wealth and positive excellence. Panic zone, zone one, zone two, the blame zone, zone three, the patience, learning and courage zone, and zone four, mastery of fear. And mastery of fear is where all the fun is at. Like Edwin said, we're hardwired for fear. Fear pushes us into blame. Blame pushes us into conflict. And blame and conflict will not just lose you money. They'll lose you so many things at the same time, including jobs, including partners, relationships, all sorts of things. It's just not worth it. 
Instead, we focus on learning and courage. And learning and courage would be a great thing to talk about in the comments today. Turning to some more cryptos, we can see Tron under Bitcoin's gravity at the moment. SHIB also. We see Uni just realigning with Bitcoin's gravity. AVAX a little bit under. When it's weaker, it has the potential to snap back. And when it's stronger, it has the potential to snap back as well. I'll just show you Clayton because this is a really, really interesting thing. Very few people would have ever thought that Clayton could take off like this. It's done incredibly well. And when you look, for example, Clayton was just selling down, selling down, selling down. This puts you on the right side of the percentage to get into things like this. But you must know what you're doing. Don't do anything blindly. And what happened? Clayton just sparked up, literally sparked up. And this is all about gravitational pull. It's a very, very valuable thing to look at. And for example, looking at MANA, the metaverse has been very downtrodden. If you look at Axie Infinity, it's just been sliding off the planet. And it looks a lot like Clayton at this particular time. Personally, I'm leading into Axie Infinity. I think it could be quite interesting. And the metaverse could see a resurgence, but that's not financial advice. And you may have to stick with the position there if you're buying on the way down. Professionals do not mind taking losses. This is why there's a huge difference in thinking between zone one and zone two and zone three and zone four. Actually, to get on the right side of the percentage, for example, with what was happening with Clayton, you have to take a loss. And I'm getting into Axie at the moment. I'm taking losses, but I'm cool with that. Why would I be cool with that? Because as the shorts gain more and more and more confidence that Axie is just going down, we could see what happened with Clayton, a big reversal in price. And that could be quite nice, but there's no guarantees when that is going to happen. This is just a way that professionals think. If you look at Clayton, look at this really huge downtrend. And then what happened? Price came back up to the first level. Tried to go a little bit further because the shorts were getting absolutely smashed. And then what happened? We had a short squeeze. Look at this short squeeze. It went all the way back to August. Sort of this lower part in August. That just goes to show you in a couple of days, you can overcome literally months and months of negative price momentum. And this is what we absolutely love about crypto. So what did Clayton do then? It said, oh, I'm still back in. And you can see it's up around here. Just think about the overall scenario. When most people, especially from the stock market, they look at crypto, they say, oh, OK, we, we may make it back to here. Oh, I maybe sell there or sell there or sell there. But would you expect it to come back to this particular level? Very few people would. But that's the concept of Clayton and that's the concept of crypto. It's so volatile. What about if we saw the same kind of thing with Axie Infinity? And I'm not suggesting you get into Axie. I'm just trying to show you a couple of ways that you can look at the market. And don't forget that if you're investing in Axie, this is kind of like a hold trade for a kind for potentially a while because you don't know when this is going to actually turn around, if it's going to turn around at all. But risk and return are intimately connected. So when you see Axie coming down like this, if we actually got a movement up to this level, that's a nice 10% return. What about something to there? 33%, not bad. 51%. And if we came back to the low that we saw in August with Clayton, that's 107%. Does this mean this is a guaranteed? A ripper of a trade. Absolutely not. Actually continue, could continue to fall down for quite some time. Remember, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. So Bitcoin, if it comes down, could continue to drag Axie down with it. But that only puts the percentage on your side, as with everything. 
just know what you're doing and if you can bear the risk you can go for things like this but if you don't feel that way if you don't have that confidence please don't do it it's not required there's so many other opportunities and looking at quant which is a bit of a community favorite we can see quant seeking to get above this short-term resistance level go quant I'd like to thank the very kind and generous community members who've reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com. And many thanks to Biggie for your kind generosity. Thank you, Ken, for your expertise and soothing voice, trying to teach your strategy to others. Greed is the enemy. Borsog is the way to go. Thank you, Biggie. And Jeffrey, thank you so much. Thank you, my friend. LGRC01. Some well-deserved coffee to show my deepest appreciation for you, Ken, and for Kate, that I feel is sharing you with us. Being second time through the CTKS Masterclass, and especially the Real Wealth Positive Excellence section, is a game changer. Doing Borsog with your advice, playing in my head, has made me do better decisions without fear and choosing probabilistic fearlessness. Thank you for being here with us day after day. Thank you so much, my friend. And thank you to everybody for your kind generosity. There are some more very nice quotes here. I'll read them out tomorrow. And thank you again to everyone. I'm so touched. Well done to everybody who put a comment on why do you think the spike was caused across the weekend? Very, very good answers. What you can see in these answers, it's not just one thing. The markets are multi-dimensional. And the more you study the market, the more multi-dimensional it will get. Well done, everyone. And it's really good to read these comments as well. Popping in your Borsog code each and every day is your way to show the market that you take the market seriously and you're doing your active learning. The more seriously that you take the market, the greater will be your returns. Well done, everyone. If you have friends or family who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each day, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please introduce them to our community by sharing a video. We'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. I'd also suggest reading the comments. They're incredibly insightful. We have so many incredibly brilliant thinkers inside our beloved global KS family. And if you're a silent watcher and you watch the videos but you don't comment, perhaps just reach out and say hi. We'd love to hear from you. We have such an amazing global family and I'm just so happy you're here to be sharing this time together. We're an incredible learning community. Together, we're stronger and kinder. We're a really different community. We don't let scamming comments into our comments. We get rid of them as soon as humanly possible. We are a real community and so grateful that you're a part of what we're doing. The reason that we talk about blame a lot is that we either win or learn and never blame. That is the way to progress in life. Blaming will just keep you stuck. Please consider sharing and liking this video and also subscribing to the channel. We would love to have you as a part of our globally extended KS family. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. And thank you also to the CTKS ambassadors for assisting Masterclass students. And of course, a very big thank you to you for watching and for being part of our global KS family. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video, such as the tax software I use and links to the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. Please use the links in the description to get in contact with the CTKS Ambassador to get 80% off the Masterclass. And you can also apply for the Partial Masterclass Scholarship. The link is in the description as well. Please remember, crypto is volatile. 
Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.